Hello children, my name is Mrs Smith and I work at Bishop Fordham's Primary School, one of the schools in the Hamlet Education Trust. And one thing that I lead at that school is a subject called RE. Now I wonder, what actually does RE mean? Have a think. See, RE stands for Religious Education. And that's what it is mainly about, religions. It's not only just about religions, it's actually learning about how people think, how people feel, how people relate to one another. It brings in different worldviews, maybe not religious, and it gets us really, really thinking. And so we're gonna spend some time, we're gonna do 10 sessions, and we're gonna be unpicking some different worldviews, some different religions, and we're gonna be thinking about how they relate to the word community how people live in community, how we personally respond to living in community. We're gonna be thinking about ourselves, what we belong to. And later on, we're gonna be delving into some sacred texts from different faiths to find out about what they believe and about what helps them practice community in a certain way. We're gonna be unpicking some different worldviews and then thinking, how does that impact me? And hopefully, by the end of these 10 sessions, we'll have built up our bank of knowledge all about community in different ways. And uh, we'll have expanded our information and our own knowledge about community and how we relate to that. So strap yourselves in. It's going to be a great time together as we explore these different faiths and different worldviews. And I'm really excited. And community is such a great thing to, to live in and to, to be part of. So um, bear with me on the technology. I'll do my best to share my screens with you and different activities with you as we go through the sessions. The first thing I'm going to share with you is what we're doing today and what you are going to need for this session. So here we go. So this is what we're focusing on today. Who we are and where we belong. So it's going to be interesting. Lots of thinking about ourselves today which is not a bad thing, just maybe not too much later on. <laughs> so here we go. This is what we'll need for today's session. You're gonna need two pieces of paper. Doesn't matter if they're lined or plain. And then you'll need at least one pen or pencil. Pause the video here and go and collect those items. Great, now that you've got those things, let's crack on with our first task. Now, first of all, I want you to think about what makes you unique. What makes you special? To do that, we're gonna have a go at drawing a picture of ourselves. Now, I want to see if you can draw a body outline, a bit like this one I've tried. Now, you'll see it doesn't have to be neat. It just needs to have enough space in the middle, so don't go for a stick man. Grab your pen or your pencil and one of your pieces of paper and have a go at drawing that body outline now. Pause the video here to give it a go. Fantastic. I'm sure your body outlines look much better than my outline. So well done. Thank you. Now, first of all, I want you to think about what makes you unique on the outside of your body. So we're thinking about our appearance. I wonder, can you think about maybe how tall you are? Maybe what color your eyes are? Maybe what color your hair is? There might be something really unique about your face. So I've got lovely freckles on my face. I wonder if you've got something like that. Now I wonder if there is something that you wear all the time and that you absolutely love wearing jeans. So you might put jeans, um, on, into your uh, outline drawing. You might always want to put on a comfy tracksuit, for example. What I'd like you to do is I want you to jot those things all about your appearance around the outside of your body outline sheet. Here's one I made earlier. You can see I've talked about my eye colour being blue. I've talked about my height being five foot six or 168 centimetres. I've talked about my hair colour being brown. I've talked about the fact that I absolutely love the colour blue. I've mentioned about my freckles on my face. So give this a go. 
think about your appearance. What makes you unique on the outside of your body? I'm just going to share a screen with you to give you some prompts and some ideas of what you can write about the, around the outside of your picture. So pause the video here and give it a go. Fantastic. I'm sure your body outlines are looking super unique. And I'm sure some of you have even found some similarities with me, Mrs. Smith. I wonder if any of you have got blue eyes, or I wonder if any of you have got brown hair. And wouldn't it be amazing if all the other children who are watching this video, maybe even today, have got the same things as you. And I wonder how brilliant it would be if they've got different things to you, because that's what makes us unique. It doesn't matter if they're similar or different. The whole mix of it all will make us special and unique. Now, I want you to think about our feelings now. So we're going to be focusing on the inside of our bodies. Just going to stop sharing now. I want you to think about maybe how you might always come across to people. See, I think I'm quite a happy person. So when I'm thinking about what makes me me, I would say that I'm a positive person, a happy person. And when I think about my feelings, I'm quite enthusiastic. So I might refer to myself as I'm quite passionate, enthusiastic. And I also think that I'm quite helpful. If I see someone in need, I'm, I offer to help. So that might be something similar to you. Now I want you to just have a think. Spend some time thinking, what makes you you on the inside? What kind of person would you say you are? Maybe you're shy. Maybe you don't actually like spending time with lots of people. And actually, for some of you, you might want to just spend some quiet time. Maybe you've got a love of sports. It might be that you absolutely love swimming, like I do. Or maybe you are into music. I absolutely love singing. So on the inside of my body outline now, and I want you to do the same in a second, I've written things about me that I've just described to you, all in the inside of the body outline. But make sure you think about it. I wonder, I want you to think about the things you like, maybe the things you don't like. I want you to think about maybe the kind of person that you try to be. Okay, so pause the video here and spend the next few moments just jotting down a few things that make you unique on the inside. Fantastic. These outlines and these inside feelings are looking spectacular. And it's really, really important that you are thinking about what makes you, what makes you the person that you are sitting in front of this screen right now completing this learning. Now, I want you to have a good look at your drawing now and see if you can compare it to my outline. You may have some similarities to me. You may have the same hair colour or eye colour, or you may be completely different. Now, different is good. Now take a look at the inside, our feelings that we've talked about. Are they the same or are they different to you? Here's a thought. People who look different often have the same feelings or hopes on the inside as other people. For example, they may have the same values like courage or faith or respect or happiness or joy on the inside, but look completely different on the outside. I think that that's just what makes us unique and really, really special. Now, when it comes to thinking about who we are and how special we are, many religions teach that they, they believe that um, they are special and unique to God. Now, for Christians, they're one of those religions. In the Bible, which is their sacred text, there's, a, there's many prayers and many um, songs and many stories and many bits of writing in there that helps them with their lives. But one thing that they can rely on and take encouragement from is a prayer that's written in the book called the Psalms. Now, the Psalms are a combination of prayers and songs, and they were mainly written by a man called King David. No one knows exactly which one, which Psalms were written by who though. 
And actually, for Christians, this, these psalms are written as a, as a, a message, a chat with God. And um, there's one that I wanted to share with you, which is about feeling special and feeling unique and um, knowing that they are loved by God. Now, even before they were born. So I'm just going to share it with you now on the screen. Let's get our body outlines out of the way and move us on. So here is the psalm that I was talking about. I'm going to read it through and I want you to think about how special and unique and cared for Christians must feel knowing this about God. It says here, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, just to unpick some of those words, you knit me together in my mother's womb. That's the idea of Christians believing that actually God prepared and, 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 and helped um, that mother come uh, bring that baby together. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. It's good. That means it's really good. It talks about um, my frame was not hidden from you. Actually, God knew what was going on um, right before they were born. Um, and your eyes saw my unformed body. So actually, way before um, they were born, Christians believe that God had, uh, had known about them and knew about them and knew what was going to be happen happening. Think about that just for a second and think how special and unique Christians must feel because God knew them or knows them even before they were born. Now, for some people, like Christians, they feel super unique and special because they feel love from, loved from God. And actually, for some, they, that's what helps bring them together with others who also feel unique and special and loved by God. Now, for some of you, I don't know when you came to do your outlines, whether you mentioned about maybe anything that uh, any groups you're part of or any teams you're part of. Some of you, you might have done that. I don't know whether any of you mentioned maybe some of the specific special symbols that maybe you wear. Now, I'm going to show you now two people, Ruth and Rebecca. They're just coming up on the screen. And I want you to have a real close look at Rebecca and Ruth because they are super, super special and unique, just like you or I, just like we've been talking about. They may look like maybe some of your friends on the outside. But and if you look really carefully, though, they're both wearing a chain around their neck. Now, Rebecca is wearing a chain with a special six pointed star. And that's known as the Star of David. And the Star of David is a special symbol for people belonging to the Jewish community. So that makes them feel special and unique, but also allows them to feel like they belong. And if, looking at Ruth, she's got a cross on her chain, and that shows that she belongs to the Christian community. And actually, that's showing that um, I follow this faith. And I want to, to um, share and show, with, show to people that I belong to this faith. So I wonder, let's think about now, who do we think we belong to? Now, when it comes to thinking about belonging, the biggest thing that I can think of is I think of, right, well, we all belong to a school. So as I said at the start, I belong to Bishop Aldham's because I work there and the children who come to our school belong to part of our school. But I wonder how hard is it sometimes to feel like you belong somewhere? Because like we said, we're all a bit different, which is good. And we're all sp special and all unique. But then how does that mean that we can fit in and feel belonging with one another? So we're going to think about that in a story that I'm going to share with you. Now, the story is shared in three parts. It's going to bring up 
how we belong to um, others in our family. We're going to be thinking about how we belong to maybe others in other groups and how we're going to belong to each other in, um, in things like the school setting. It's gonna, uh, we're going to be finding out about a girl called Amy. And Amy um, is going to be uh, experiencing something new for the first time. And I wonder in this story whether she feels a little bit left out. So what I'd like you to do now, before I read the story, I want you to pause the video here and I want you to come up with a list on, on, on your pieces of paper, write a list of maybe the times when you have felt left out or maybe when you have felt a bit lonely. Jot down your thoughts on a piece of paper and pause the video here. Great, fantastic. Do you know what? I think it's super hard sometimes to think about times when you feel lonely. So I'm gonna read this story now. As I read the story, I want you to jot down things that you hear that maybe show that people are belonging to a group. So belonging to a group of some kind. And also, I wonder if you can jot down some of those feeling words, maybe some of the feeling words that we've already thought about from the inside of us. Some feeling words that you feel the characters are feeling as we go through the story. So I'm just going to read to you from my screen. So I'm going to look at my screen, but hopefully you can still see me. So here's the first part of the story. We're going to be finding out about a girl called Aisha. Let's see what we can find out about how she feels that she belongs and what she might be feeling as we go through the story. Get ready to jot down your ideas as I read. The house next door to Aisha's had been empty, but on Friday, when she got home from school, she saw new people moving in. There was a mum, two children, and the oldest one of them looked about her age. She noticed them coming in and out during the weekend, and mum said, why don't you go and ask her if she'd like to go and play? But Aisha felt too self-conscious and too shy to speak to the girl. Mum said, she's probably in as a much need of a friend as you are. Remember, Allah loves kindness, you know. Aisha knew that, and she didn't much like being reminded of it. Now, have a think. Think about maybe what we've learned about Aisha through that little bit of a story. She's a little bit shy. Maybe that's similar to you. She also um, had her mum mention um, Allah loves kindness. Now, Allah is the word that Muslims use to describe God. So they cry out to Allah. And that her mum there was reminding her about actually showing kindness might be to go and see this new girl who's moved in next door. So let's read another part of the story and see from another viewpoint of someone else. Here's a boy called Darren. Now, Darren usually enjoyed church on Sunday mornings. His group of about 10 to 9 to 12 year olds was full of his friends and they often went to the cinema together as well as being part of their church and learning about God together. One Sunday, sitting in church for the first part of the service, he noticed a new family. One of their children, a girl, looked about his age. When it was time to go to young church in the church hall, the new girl um, came along. She was called Amy. She looked a bit shy, but it was a friendly group and everyone said hi and made sure that she was included in what they were doing. Now we find out about this girl, Amy, who's come to join Darren at his church. And part of what Darren was trying to, to show um, within his little group at church was to show welcome and to show we're including you. And I wonder whether that's um, what you feel maybe when, when you felt lonely and look back at your list of the times when maybe you felt lonely or left, left out. I wonder whether there was a group or someone who welcomed you in. Now, let's find out what happens to the next part of the story, because I think that there's something going on with Amy. We've now learned her name, so let's find out. At 
On her first day at her new school, Amy met the teacher, Mrs Cullen, at the entrance. She was really nice. They went into the classroom before all the other children arrived. She sat on a desk at the front and no one else sat with her though. As the others came in, she recognised a boy she had seen at church. Now children, have a think, who was that boy? Do we think he might have been called Darren? I think so. And she also saw a girl from the house next door. Now have a think, who could that girl be? I think it could be Aisha who we learnt about. She felt better straight away. After taking the register, Mrs Cullen told the class that Amy was new and asked, is there someone in class today who will make Amy welcome and show her where everything is? There was a long pause. It felt to Amy like the worst minute of her life. Now that's where the story finishes. I'm just going to bring myself back to your screen so I can see you. That's where the story finishes. Now you've got two people there who've worked out who Amy is. You've got Aisha who uh, lives next door to Amy but she's a little bit shy, she's a little bit unconfident and didn't want to go and say hello to her at home. I wonder, do you think she steps forward and offers to show Amy around the school? She might have in the back of her head, or mum's reminding me about what Alice says about kindness. I wonder whether she feels that she can show belonging to Amy by, doing, by stepping forward and offering. And then on the other hand, we've got that boy Darren, who's also in the same class as her, and he's met her and has been part of that church group with her. But I wonder whether Darren's feeling a little bit self-conscious because he's a boy, Amy's a girl. Sometimes those differences make things a bit awkward for some people. And I wonder whether he feels like that. Have a look back at maybe some of the thoughts you've jotted down during the story. Have you managed to spot any ways that they're feeling like they belong to each other? Have you managed to jot down maybe some of the feelings that Aisha, Darren and Amy might have been feeling along the way? If you have, then fantastic and well done. We're actually going to be returning back to Amy, Darren and Aisha's story in our next session. But before we do that, I wonder if you can come up with some thoughts about what you think should happen next. Should it be Aisha who offers? to help Amy out in her first day at school? Should it be Darren? Or maybe it could be both. I want you to, to think about maybe those times that you've maybe welcomed people. Now, we are gonna be spending some time on this in the next session. So do jot your thoughts down now. Pause the video to have a think. Great, great thinking. Make sure you hold on to those pieces of paper because we will be needing them in our next session. Now, as we come to finish our session, um, I want you to look back at the drawing of yourself. So here's mine, with the inside and the outside on display. I want you to think about all those things that make you unique and special. And I wonder, this unique, special person that we've got in front of us here, what communities, what groups, who do you belong to and I wonder if you can have a maybe a discussion with the adults that you've got at home today maybe about the different communities different groups that you belong to or maybe things that they belong to being part of a family is almost like your own little community you probably have your own little in jokes or your own little things subtle things that you do that makes your little community group your family unique Definitely worth having a chat. One thing that um, I like to chat about with my, uh, my, my parents is about family trees. We get to talk about how, um, people, how people are related and how our community of family is built up just from being uh, from one person and how you relate and how you link to the others. Maybe you've got um, some family tree or you could draw out your own family tree uh, with the adults in your home. It's been lovely spending time with you today and we will be back again so please do tune in for session two but hopefully today we've got you just about thinking about belonging about who you are 
and starting to think about maybe some different groups and how you might welcome and show belonging to others. See you next time for session two of our RE community sessions. Goodbye.